Hey, good evening, everybody. Happy Monday. We've uh, got, got, got a very fun show tonight planned for you. Robert Berman kind of pitched the idea of uh, bringing Zachary on and uh, talking about his art, and in particular, a purchase that they uh, that uh, Robert had made with Zachary, which is kind of fun. I mean, we, we all know how several collectors really enjoy picking up complete issues, and it's it's rare that you kind of get the opportunity to do that. Um, you know, we've seen it a few times, of course, between, uh, you know, with reps, for instance, where they'll sell a complete book beginning, uh, you know, before it's ever offered to the public. But in this instance, there was that opportunity. So, uh, you know, I thought it was a great, great thing to have uh, on the show. Last week, we had Robert on on Monday to uh, talk to him. And so today we're going to bring both uh, Zachary, the artist uh, who worked on that, and uh, Robert into the chat tonight. So welcome to the show. How are you guys doing tonight? Excellent. Super, super uh, duper. Thanks for having us, Bill. No, it's uh, my pleasure. Now, of course, Robert, now he's a, uh, an old hand at this. But Zachary, you mentioned this is the first time doing a uh, an interview of this sort. So, uh, you know, I'm glad I'm glad to that you're here. And, uh, you know, I th I'm, and you've got good Internet to uh, work uh, this out with us tonight. So, uh, Zachary, I mean, we should talk about you first before we, you know, dive into the complete issue and, th and whatnot. I mean, you've been a professional illustrator for over 20 years, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And uh, what, where, were you, where were you trained? Uh, I went to school at SVA in Manhattan, the School of Visual Arts. Um, I graduated there in 98. Oh, sweet. Uh, the School of Visual Arts is uh, one heck of a, you know. It's, a, yeah, a it was really good. For learning, uh, and, you know, and also you usually get uh, a decent training in illustration. And, you know, and uh, I mean, it's, it's a great school. I, I got accepted there and a, uh, a smaller school uh, near Boston, and I, I chickened out going to SVA. Okay. The first year you had to uh, go there, you had at least when I when it was in the uh, mid '80s, you had to live at the Y, and I, I decided <laughs> that I was that was not you know small you know coming from small town Ohio to go to uh, to, to New York, the, the YMCA you know wow. shared, shared bathroom uh, you know on you know just didn't sound like the the right place. But I'm assuming your your first year experience was a little different. Uh, yeah, they had upgraded to having dorms by then. Um, but uh, yeah, I was coming from small town Wild Rose, Wisconsin, uh, directly to Manhattan. So that was a big shift. <clears throat> yeah, but did uh, made it no problem. I mean, I assume probably being able to hang out in the dorms was a would made things at least as an adjustment period a whole lot easier. Yeah, it wasn't too hard. I think it would be a lot harder going from a big city to a small town. Mm -hmm. That is probably true. I, you know, it's strangely <laughs> enough. I mean, right? Because I I enjoyed Boston. I just wasn't in down. You know, they're proper. But I, I don't know. New York still scared me back in the eighties. I mean, so yeah, it was just a. It, it was. I just remember walking the streets in the middle of the night and having people follow me, and it made me think. You know, this is definitely not, not for me, scrawny, <laughs> me. But but uh, but it anyway, might have just so been naive. That. that <laughs> too. Uh, yes, without question. So, um, so did you go to the school of visual arts specifically because of the, you know, you know, the illustration side, you know, bent for that? that yeah, that was the, I was looking to get into cartooning. Um, mm -hmm. that was how I ended up at SVA. That was the, when I went to show my portfolio around, they had the best cartooning department in the country as far as I was finding out at the time. So I had, uh, yeah, decided comics, uh, looked like a, cool way to try to make money doing art and uh that's yeah that's how i ended up at sva um and when i was going through the program there i started to realize how really hard comics are and i was taking illustration classes too and that was a lot more appealing i ended up going a lot harder at illustration than than comics but i still love comics and i've done gotten to work with some some comics i got to do that whole issue of new mutants which was cool mm -hmm. so when you were um at uh, sva i mean who were some of your instructors that maybe some of the people in our audience would know as far as uh you know people who had comics backgrounds you recall any of them um john ruggieri was uh, mm -hmm. a favorite um sal amandala yeah. Oh, yeah 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 he was he, he was he was one of our one of our teachers there. Um, 
Yeah, I ended up taking more of the illustration classes uh, than the than the cartoony stuff. Mm -hmm. So when you uh, you got out of SBA, I mean, what was uh, you know what kind of path were you on as far as uh, you know what were you looking for as for regular work? I assume it was more illustration and advertising, mm -hmm. I guess. Or yep, yep. I got uh, I started getting work during my senior year. Uh, Slate magazine came and checked out. Um, a guy who, one of the editors there, um, worked with one of my teachers, Steve Brodner. Um, and he saw some of the stuff that I, I was, I was working on in class and, uh, I ended up getting a little work through him. That was some of the first professional work that I did. And did you stay in, uh, in New York after you got out of school or did you go mm -hmm. back? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I lived there for about 10 years. Um, I got I, I, I got an agent, um, a rep, as I don't know if people still say that. <laughs> oh, they do. <laughs> a rep, yeah. Um, I got that pretty much right out of college. I got, uh, yeah, Peter Lott I worked with um, pretty much right out of college. And we were getting um, magazine, newspaper, and uh, book cover work. I did a cover for, uh, did a Village Voice cover which was pretty cool. Um, that was the, that's the big local free paper in New York, in New York. Mm -hmm. So that was on every, uh, street corner for like a week. And that had to be very cool. It was fun. <laughs> and you know, well, yeah, there's the, there is definitely the benefit to having a good agent, right? I mean, cause they're the ones out there, uh, you know, promoting your, your work to different uh, editors and those sorts of things. So, uh, you know, back, you know, just getting started, I'm sure that would made made certain things a lot easier for you. But do you work with a, an agent today? I do not. No. Just have uh, you've got you have a uh, Rolodex of of uh, clients to work with, I imagine. But so uh, you know, we should probably look at some of the artwork that uh, I know that Robert helped me pick out some things off your website, and I did link to your website uh, in the show description. So anybody who was curious about uh, checking out your work, they can do so there. And and I do have to ask you, Zachary. I mean, I don't recall. I mean, is there is there places where you do you, do you sell originals, or how do you? I mean, obviously, Roberts picked some things up from you. Um, you know, how how do you typically handle you know original art sales today? It's been people contacting me through email. Yeah. Yeah. And there is uh, for those who you know who uh, are curious, you can go to ZacharyBaldus.com, and there's a contact link right up in the header there. So, uh, and I assume pretty you know the, the, a lot of the stuff on the website is more uh, for show versus for sale, or is or are some of the pieces that you show on the portfolio available? A lot of it's available. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I should set something up a little more definitive about uh, selling stuff. Right now, it's just more of a portfolio, but. Yeah, mainly it's mainly just been people contacting me. Um, I did some DC trading card stuff that uh, people just finally, all of a sudden after you know 15, 20 years of doing it, I had like three people all at once contacting me uh, to get the originals. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's. Uh... It's funny we're you know we're hearing well trading cards have always been very popular for for our collectors but certainly in the last few years there's some there's a there's definitely a, a group of collectors who uh, who are just you know very much into into picking up the original art for them and I, and we've been hearing that a lot I had a had a creator on recently same thing it's like you know all of their wild storm blah 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 yeah I can't remember what it was some basketball thing that they did uh, mm -hmm. you know were bought out by one one particular person who just loves everything that was you know trading card related to Wildstorm ever and uh and that's you know that's 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 great i mean there, there's usually a niche uh in art buyers who uh you know have either they, they like comic book artwork or they like illustration artwork or they like trading card artwork um you know as, as art fans it's uh, there's there's somebody you know there's definitely collectors for every every niche um so how, uh, you know, why don't we talk a little bit about, you know, you said you went into illustration initially. How did you end up getting work for, you know, with Marvel or DC, even just for the trading card side of things? Was that through your agent or on your own? Well, I should have foreseen this question. Um, I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, I remember ending up at the DC and Marvel offices. Um, you know, I had 
It might have been through some friends. I'm not sure. I, I, did, I definitely had a friend who worked at Marvel and um, got me in to see one of the higher ups there. Um, that might have trickled down to some work. Uh, but uh, yeah, I just I ended up getting into the offices, showing my portfolio around and got some calls. So you, you ended up going back to uh, you know comics at least to have as a as a set uh, an extra outlet for uh, for the work. That's so that's pretty cool. Um, why don't I here? You know I'm going to pull up a couple slides and things that we can take a look at too. I know uh, like I said some of this stuff uh, is sequential related, um, but maybe we can talk about some of the pieces that are here. I mean I know this this is something Harvey Picar related, but I don't recognize it. Yeah, it, it was a it was a one pager for uh, American Splendor. Mm -hmm. um, just something, just it, you, you got lucky and uh, they contacted you or how did you end up? Yeah. Uh, 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 huh. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't recall exactly how that, how, how that all went down. Um, but, uh, it was just like in uh, in the movies where you really do get these little um, uh, th uh, thumbnails from from Harvey to 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 work from the uh, the little stick figures. Uh, but yeah, that was just ending up at the DC offices, and I would they just it was just a good fit mm -hmm. to uh, get me on the American Splendor stuff. I did like three or four things with Harvey. That was that was really neat. So with these, are you saying he, he provided these layouts, or he gave some? He did the uh, yeah, right. He he did little stick figure layouts with the word balloons. Interesting. So, you know, this piece is pretty indicative of your uh, pencil style, and we're going to see that in a little bit. I mean. Uh, you have you definitely have a, a very illustrative quality to the way you handle the pencils and i mean from uh you know, do, you, do you do a lot of your own coloring i, I assume when you like, I do. Yeah. yeah the new mutants uh pages were mostly colored by someone else mm -hmm. do you give direction when someone else is going to be doing uh coloring on your stuff or do you kind of uh let let them uh, run with it because people you know traditionally in sequential art you know m most often you'll see uh you know them traditionally inked from the pencils or even digitally inked but uh, your pencils are so finished that you almost don't don't need that and uh you know it's it, which is which is a quality that you don't see too often unless an artist is maybe doing ink wash right and then you, you could say yeah that doesn't really need uh it could go straight to um you know to uh coloring but your stuff doesn't you know it's all pencil and that's just rare i think you know in, the, in our business yeah um it it takes a lot out of you all that pencil rendering i don't really do it anymore no, we just paint now. Yeah, that's uh, well. Okay, that well, that's good to know. I mean, I see. I, I had a. I, I had all these color pieces, and that I'm stretching my arm just thinking about all that. <laughs> <laughs> I think Miko Sue, Miko Sue on similarly. I have a piece he did in uh, rendered pencils from like ten years ago, but now it's all ink wash because I can just only imagine the labor. Yeah. Right. No, I mean, it, well, it makes sense. I mean, at, at the end of the day, I mean, doing tight pencils is time consuming. I mean, it's, this, it's was, kind of... this was for House of Mystery for Vertigo Comics. And this is um, those 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 pictures from the the Harvey P. Carr sequence. Those are from the actual DC office. Those were the actual editors I was working with. And this was out of that same office. This is those same two editors. Uh, <laughs> Did they was, yeah, that? this House of Mystery stuff. This is the the colored, the the pencils, and then I did the coloring. This I thought was real, really successful, um, as far as se sequential stuff that I've done. I, I love how this looks. Now, yeah, what, no, what I mean, role? What role did they play in making this happen? Just you use their ideas, or did they actually pose for you? Or who? I'm sorry, Robert. Who the, who are they? The, yeah, you said they're these are DC staffers. Oh, in the Harvey P. Car, they yeah they oh, sent okay. me pictures. 
okay. in that last one we were looking at. Okay, but in the last one. Yeah, what yeah. What about in this one? This one, I got a, I got a group of friends together and we did a, a, a photo shoot. We just went through panel by panel, like a little movie shoot. We used the house I was living in at the time in the basement. Um, yeah. That's so there's friends of mine. Okay. So like Alex Ross style, uh, you know, photo photo shooting and then then arting it. Wrightson yeah. did that too. Mm -hmm. House of Mystery. Oh yeah, yeah. a lot of, a lot of uh, comics creators, uh, you know, use photo uh, references that they do themselves. I mean, definitely. I mean, to, it's it's very commonplace, you know. I think, um, but that's cool that you were actually staging some of this stuff at where you live. Uh huh. That was a picture of a friend of mine, Amanda Creek, who um, she's uh, very photogenic. But uh, I was trying to um, pitch to Camel cigarettes. That's why some there's a bunch of good pieces that are that I did that all have cigarettes. <laughs> uh, that was that. Yeah, I was. Um, I had heard they were looking for illustrators and I was uh, in between jobs. So I was, I, I kind of pitched myself to Camel cigarettes and that was how that got created. And this is a fun example of the, of a fadeaway style. Uh, Coles Phillips was an illustrator who I was really interested in, uh, influenced by who did uh, what was called the fadeaway girl. Mm -hmm. Um, and this pattern is actually totally flat. Um, the only, it only looks rendered because of the rendering I did with the pencils on her dress. Right. Did you start with the, the pattern already somehow? And then no. drew on it. You, you drew all of that as well. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I, I handmade the, I handmade the pattern and then laid that over it in Photoshop after I'd scanned in the drawing. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. John Byrne and uh, Sienkiewicz have done some of this style in, in the comic book world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sienkiewicz is a big influence on me. Yeah, I, I can see that, definitely. I mean, he has, uh, I think he's been a big influence on a lot of creators, but I mean, honestly, yeah. aside from Sienkiewicz, I mean, who uh, in the comics world, you know, are, are artists who uh, you admire or see as influences? Hmm. Um, let's see. Well, Frank Miller was a big one growing up, uh, reading all the Sin City stuff. Mm -hmm. I loved the, the way he used, um, the inks and, uh, the, the really stark black and white stuff with those, those rainy scenes were so cool. Um, yeah, I just remember being totally blown away with uh with those books when i saw them uh i like alex ross's stuff a lot um some of the friends some friends i went to school with uh feral dalrymple i really like do you know who he is oh, yeah. oh absolutely yeah 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 he's he's a, a good friend of mine um i i'm always totally blown away by by mm -hmm. all his work um, I got to go to school with a really cool group of people who were coming through at the same time as me. Uh, James Jean, mm -hmm. who did oh, yeah. Fable covers. Um, he was a year or two behind me. Um, Tomer Hanuka, who's done a bunch of uh, comics work. Um, he does a comic called Tropical Toxic, I believe. Uh, those guys are, are all really huge uh, artistic influences on me from comics. Uh, Bear, uh, let's see, from back in the day, Barry Sears. Am I getting that name right? Bart Sears? Bart Sears, that's it. Bart Sears. Oh, man, I loved him growing up. Uh, Brutes and Babes was this really yeah. cool thing that he put out. Uh, yeah, that, he, 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 was, he was a big influence. 
Yeah, no, he uh, well, he had those uh, uh, sections in Wizard, right, where he was always doing. Uh, yeah, Boots you know, and Babes was the you're yeah, right. Also the section, yeah. the section yeah. of Wizards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, who was? Uh, let's see. The guy, the big. Oh, it's ridiculous. I don't know his name off the top of my head. Um, he did Ninjack, and then he became a big, big wig at Marvel. Um, uh, Casada. Casada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe Casada. Some of his stuff was was so cool, um, like the Muka influence stuff that that he did. Um, that yeah, that was a that was a big revelation to, to to see some some of his his work. He actually came and spoke at SVA while I was there. I remember he showed this this Punisher cover, um, and the it was all these buildings, and the Punisher logo was hidden in the negative space of the buildings, and if he said it was an example of uh, sometimes you just don't want to be too clever because most people didn't see it. And I'm like, no, dude, you weren't being too clever. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Casada, you know, he, uh, I think he was, he was a big influence on a lot of different, uh, you know, comics artists and illustrators. I mean, the work that they did and, you know, in the Marvel Knights run was just phenomenal. And his work on Daredevil, uh, you know, there was just so many, so much unique work that he put out there that, uh, his, you know, this stuff is highly sought after to this day, especially from that period, because so many people who were, uh, you know, getting into his stuff in, uh, in the 90s were just, I mean, it's, you know, his Ninja work was great with Paul yeah. Gattings on that on him. Uh, yeah, just phenomenal. I mean, to this day, I think, you know, that's, there's, there's, there's not enough of that artwork out there to own from collectors because so many people really enjoy it. Uh, Todd McFarlane was a huge influence. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was, I've probably never been as hyped for anything in my life as spawn number one spawn issue. Number one, <laughs> it was like two years that, that of hype on that thing. And I was, yeah, I was drawing i remember drawing out of spawn number one just copying directly uh some of those spawn panels and i got it yeah i got a ton out of got a ton out of that so i'm trying to look up some of the stuff that uh people are mentioning in the chat but uh yeah that's uh that, that's that's awesome and, and again you were in the right place that's what i think back back at that period of time i think most artists you know always felt like they needed to be in new york city to be around the you know the, the uh, publishers and that sort of thing and so uh so that that's you know that's pretty cool that uh, you even had uh, the opportunity to have casada stop by and uh, you know just show off some of his work i mean that's that's what i think a lot of uh like young creators miss out on was, was the opportunity to to get to see the work in person and you know know what uh, know what it looks like know what they're getting into if they want to pursue it as a career that sort of thing i, I imagine a lot of uh, illustrators you know either just never found the opportunity to get make a break or uh you know or, or ha get the confidence to go out there and you know show their stuff to an editor at a con or something like that but uh yeah, that that's uh that, that's great um let's see here so you know i can i'll pull this back up here there we go so what was this from that was for a smallville rpg um that is a cosmic boy from legionnaires who showed up on smallville the legionnaires um i think it was a supergirl tie-in um so it was actually it was an episode of Smallville because I was did not watch Smallville, but I made a point to watch this one because I'm a Legion fan. Okay, it was, written, it was written by Jeff Johns, and it it was an episode in which the three original Legionnaires come back to Smallville and have an adventure with Superboy is just a one off. Okay, yeah. Um, I did a two page spread in every issue of Smallville magazine for probably four or five years. Um, that was a fun gig. This is not, this is outside of that gig. That was for the magazine. This was, uh, like a hardbound or, you know, like a hardcover Archie B, RG, um, role playing RPG. game, RPG, yeah. uh, <laughs> game. Now, or is this, uh, <clears throat> RPG, uh, game. you know, is there digital in this or is this all traditional? Um, that is basically all traditional but um manipulated 
digitally. Sure. Um, so like the, uh, the rings, the glowing rings are all, are, were drawn separately and are on a separate layer in Photoshop. Sure. And then laid over, but they were, it's all hand done mm -hmm. and then scanned in. I don't think anything's purely created on the computer there. Right. I rarely, I rarely do anything purely in the computer. So it always has a traditional beginning. I mean, there's a lot of artists that, you know, work in that, in that way today, you know, where a major, like 90% of the work is at, you know, at least traditional. Mm -hmm. And then there's just certain effects that are easier to do in Photoshop. And when oh, you get, yeah. to, when yeah. you get to be, you know, when you get to do the finishes on your stuff too, uh, you know, like, like you definitely do, especially when doing work like for an RPG or trading cards or something, you definitely, you know, I, I can see wanting to do some of those, those bits, you know, in an easier fashion, you know, to speed up the time to make, get the look that you want. Um, yeah, no, this, this is, this is very nice. And I think there's another, another piece from that series somewhere, but, uh, what's this one about? <laughs> that was, uh, for my friend's comic book shop in Portland, Oregon called cosmic monkey comics. And they had, uh, lots of people had done versions of the cosmic monkey and they, that they had up on their walls. Um, this one, now they, they have ended up, uh, completely merching it out on stickers and magnets and, uh, other purchasable little trinkets. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's, that's had a nice, a nice life that, that illustration. Well, that's, that's cool. So, I mean, how do you, it, what do you think about when you see a piece of yours that goes out there that has uh, you know, one intent and then it gets used in other ways? I mean, is that, I assume that's, is it flattering or is it, uh, you know, more like, you know, do you, do you like seeing things that have a, have a longevity to them? Like something like this? Yeah, it's flattering. Yeah. I mean, it's all about, I mean, a big, a big, you know, big part of making art is getting it seen. Mm -hmm. So I'm thrilled that it's getting seen. Yeah, Marcus mentions apes are always fun. That is very true. A, mm -hmm. a, good, a good monkey or a good <laughs> ape typically uh, will sell a comic book, but, you know, if it's on the cover or uh, at least bring a smile to one's face. So, so this was used in just a lot of different things. So, uh, maybe their marketing and uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They just use it around the store now. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see here. Now, is this a camel ad too? Uh, no, this was, this was pre that, um, that series, mm -hmm. uh, this was more like a true romance influenced piece the like the movie true romance. Uh, yeah. I had some friends in Florida. I took a trip down to Florida and we just kind of did a little dress up photo shoot and I ended up doing some paintings, uh, from the, from those pictures. But yeah, that was that was kind of the 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 idea was sort of a true romance vibe, or even like the beginning of uh, Romeo and Juliet, the Baz Luhrmann Romeo and Juliet, yeah. that Hawaiian shirt. I'm sure I was thinking of that Baz Luhrmann scenes. <laughs> so the great lighting effects, like the the reflection in his sunglasses, even. Oh, thanks. Yep, that came out good. Uh, now in these pieces, I mean, what's the uh, the paint medium? Acrylic, usually acrylic. Sometimes I'm using acrylics to look more like watercolors, but it's almost always acrylic. And then uh, size of a piece like this? Uh, that's about um, probably like 14 by 12. Okay. 14 by 10, I don't know, eight or 10. <clears throat> no, those are, those are really nice. And I, cause that's, I, I couldn't really tell, I was thinking it might've been a heavy watercolor, but it makes sense that uh, it's acrylic to get the really rich colors. So you're getting mm here. -hmm. Let's see. So that was from the Smallville RPG. Okay. Dr. Fate, I believe. Mm-hmm. Do you tend to do the background first or, or figure and then frisk it or? Um, 
figure and frisk it. Like, does that mean? <laughs> yeah, like do the figure like and then and then tape it off to protect while you do the background. Oh, or... tape it off. Um, I rarely go through the trouble of taping it off. It's more like ah, oh, block this part with my hand a little bit. Um, <laughs> uh occasionally maybe taping it off uh more like just painting it just uh, just ca kind of carefully painting up to the edges i probably started with the figure on this i'm not sure and again another kind of like 10 by 12 size these were small because yeah. boy the 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 deadline was tight on these and i knew i could just save that little bit of time mm -hmm. um working small these were like four by five well Nothing I wrong. knew they weren't going to print much bigger than that, so I knew it was. I, I'd be fine working that small. Sure, oh, of course. Uh, yes. So uh, yeah, it, it, you know, Marcus is mentioning airbrush because it's something that we've uh, discussed on here. But do you typically do any uh, do any work with that, or is it strictly uh, brush? You know, and uh, you know the acrylic paint. Um. I don't own an airbrush. I did when I was younger. Um, I kind of wish I did. Uh, probably a lot of the effects I'm getting, I might even get easier. But uh, any kind of spray effects, I'm usually using a toothbrush or just like knocking my my brush to to get spray off of it. Yeah, I mean you can definitely see some some spray in this one. Right. Uh, but no, just then paint. And uh, and then yeah, occasionally some splatter effects. Really but nice I'm not against color airbrush. Color. <laughs> it was funny when I was coming through college. Airbrush was almost like a dirty tool, like uh, cheating. <laughs> now with computers, it seems like oh, getting back to the basics. Go get do some <laughs> airbrushing, <laughs> some real tools. Uh, right. No, airbrush seems cool. Um, I just uh, I don't have one. No, oh, well, yeah, I mean it's it, airbrush. I think is uh, uh, you know there was a lot of cleanup, right? I mean you know always. Oh, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> no, that was the thing, right? I mean that's I, I don't think that they're uh, it's something that a lot of artists really enjoyed after they had it, after they tried it once or twice. Maybe they enjoyed it, but then once they had to get in there and clean the dang nibs out, uh, swap out the colors, it just became you know. Yeah, easier to try it in a different manner. Yeah, yeah. This was um, just a totally personal piece. Uh, I was influenced. I was uh, inspired by Muka Alfonso Muka, who had done like a um, series, like the. Uh, I was trying to do a, like a summer, fall, winter, spring, like the seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, women as the seasons. Uh, he had done, I don't know, he had done a, a few different series that were sort of like that. Um, maybe he did the seasons also. I think he did. He did, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. I think, yeah. Right. Um, and yeah, that's what that was. Well, it's always, uh, I, I assume whenever you're not doing commercial work, you've usually, I mean, do you have like a couple paintings going on at a, any given time? Uh, just for um, yourself? Not usually. No, um, I am usually trying to plow through one thing, get that done, and be moving on to the next one. This one is maybe kind of interesting. It's one of the few times I ever tried using a potato stamper. So I made that little flower out of a uh, on a potato and then stamped it out, and that's how that's how those flower shapes. I did it in the red and then over the red with the white. Mm -hmm. Um, that's how those flower shapes started, at least, was with the potato stamper. I never did that again. <laughs> Looks good, though. It does look good. I forgot about that. That was something uh, in art school they, they had talked about. I don't think I ever tried it, but but it makes a whole lot of sense, right? I mean, to to utilize something like custom that. Custom little right. stamp tool. Right. Easy and it's to make. Be, it's always going to be varied in terms of holding the paint and everything. Too, right. So. Yeah. yeah. No, that's cool. I mean, and um, you know, and Muka obviously, you know, had a lot of uh, you know nouveau kind of influences, and just the way you're handling the lot, you know, the the shape in the background, you're kind of carrying that nouveau feel into into the piece too, without being overly, yeah. you know, heavily saying it. You know, this is an homage to that era of painting uh -huh. uh, and design. 
And I like it a lot. Oh, cool. Thanks. So this was one of the two page spreads from Smallville magazine. That was kind of a episode. unique illustration solution mm -hmm. using the black of the page for the to be the cavern that they're trapped in and able to play with those cool um, heat I, you know, heat uh, heat beam out of his eyes with the lava and stuff. How long did you get to do those? I, I don't remember. For, I would say three or four years, four or five years even. Well, that's a, that's a good gig to have. Yeah, yeah, it was really fun. Now, do you, I, uh, I'm curious, do you, do you get out to, sh you know, conventions or art shows or anything where you get to, you know, like show I, up? I rarely have. Um, I did that a couple of times when I was living in Portland. Oh, and we went once when we were living in New York um, to the Small Press Expo, mm -hmm. SPX. Yeah. Uh, we were doing, um, a, a group of us SVA kids were doing a project called Meat House. Um, it was a art, you know, it was an anthology. Everybody put in some pages. Um, and that's got all those guys I was talking about. James Jean, um, a friend he saw, Andrews, Farrell Dalrymple, Tomer Hanuka, uh, uh, yeah, others um, that I should be remembering, Tom Herpick. Uh, what was I going with that? Just, uh, <laughs> it's, you know, going out to shows and exhibiting. Oh, that was, oh, right. We went, so yeah, Meat House went to the Small Press Expo. Oh, man, that was so much fun. Yeah. And then, like, uh, uh, some some similar type small press stuff in Portland. Um, I went to New York Comic Con once just as an attendee, and that's about it. I'd like to though. All right. Well, I mean, see, you, you definitely have a lot of work here. I mean, I don't know how much you know is sold, but if you worked on uh, the Smallville, you know, for for, for a number of years, uh, you, even in though it was a it was a monthly magazine. There's still, you know, you did do a lot of pieces. I mean, have you sold most of them? I'm just kind of curious. I would say no, I have not sold most of them. Oh. Oh. Um, yeah, I've always felt a little bit like I'd be an outsider at a comic book convention. Um, but I've got a pretty good little pile of uh, comic adjacent and comic book specific stuff. I'd, I'd love to go and get a booth sometime. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, that, I, yeah. Well, that's what I'm thinking. It's like, cause I look at your website and I know that you're not showing a lot of things that we're talking about here. So yeah, if you still got them, I mean, so if anybody's familiar with any of the images out there, you should certainly reach out to Zachary through his website and ask questions about what he may or may not have. Cause yeah. you may have some interesting stuff that you might want to pick up. Uh, clearly there's, there's a lot of material out there. Um, and uh, you know, very nice likeness here, of course, of uh, John Waters. Thanks. Yeah, was that's fun, fun that or was, is it job? That was uh that's playing around with the fadeaway thing a little bit there. That's like kind of traditional, the black on black fadeaway. That's almost like can happen in real life. Um so it doesn't look that weird, but um I it is it is playing around with that. But uh that's a pretty big one. That's one of the bigger pieces I've ever done. Um it's probably two feet by three feet or so. 24 by 36. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, and I was, I would, that was just one, that was just not having work and just doing a personal piece when I was just out of college. I just found that a cool photo reference that I thought would be fun to work from. Yeah. Never heard from Mr. Waters about it. <laughs> I tried to send it to him, but never heard back. Wow. It's it's a it's a very good likeness of him for sure. Um, let's see, uh, Jeffrey Moy, fellow artist, mentions uh, an interesting design for Cosmic Boy on your portfolio. So, uh, awesome. Yeah, let's see here. So uh, that's some um, very illustrationy illustration work. <laughs> uh, that was for Golf Digest about mail order club scams 
You Dude, know, I'd not, say not I nailed because- it. I was I, I didn't get I was like what is what are those you know and now now I see it now. oh yeah it's the golf club right <laughs> yeah <laughs> hey, uh, Ron Ron Shepard uh, we'll see is actually asking you know if, is the John Waters piece for sale oh that's a tough one uh, I it's for sale everything's for sale well Ron you can uh, definitely make an inquiry through uh, through Zach's website so uh, that is a beloved old piece um, it'd be tough to let go uh, but yeah everything's yeah I, I, sure so yeah see maybe 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 if we have you on again Zach well we could just show pieces that are available on that okay one. We'll yeah, yeah. But, uh, I, I knew That's going into the night show it was I was gonna be equipped for an interview but not for a full-on uh, like interview and art sales show um, but but yeah, people should make inquiries definitely, and uh, we can definitely talk about it, Zach, afterwards. But yeah, this is fun. So I assume so. This was for you just mentioned a Golf Digest, yeah, uh, spot illustration, yeah, very nice. Yeah, I like how that mailbox came out. I remember being just thrilled, like, oh wow, I just whipped that out, and this mailbox looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> It's Remember always that? good to be satisfied with, with with an illustration, right? I mean, but it's good. I mean, everything about it. The composition is beautiful. I mean, uh, there's uh, hopefully the uh, the editor that that hired you was equally pleased. I think so. And there's uh, yeah, Lightning Lad. So another that. one. This like- Smallville RPG, yeah. Mm-hmm. So on like a three by five somewhere. Around. Right, yeah. Those are those are small, yeah. Three by five, yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah, it's a early piece that's pretty much right out of college. Um, that is uh yeah, just personal. Just mm-hmm. like just putting a portfolio piece together in my early twenties. Cool. I think it's uh, Hulk's got brain freeze here. <laughs> well, no, he's mad. His ice cream cone just dropped oh, down on the didn't, ground. He didn't get to enjoy the. Uh, brain freeze. <laughs> <laughs> He'd only just gotten started. Uh, yeah, that was um, that Hulk was photo referenced. Some people will recognize from a really good Hulk toy. Um, I was staying with uh, my nephews. Um, and my brother uh, in Broomfield, Colorado, and that's my nephews there in the illustration. And uh, yeah, they had that toy, and we put this. I thought it'd be fun to work with them on a piece. No, it came out really nice. And size on something like this? That is Photoshop together drawings. Okay. So this isn't one, there's no one finished, these are all individual drawings down to like that fence is a different drawing from the the bird on the house, probably. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know, I'll probably like on an eight and a half by 11, like that Hulk is probably most of an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Mm-hmm. And the the kids are a little small, smaller. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. I must have kind of kept the sizing all relatively similar. Um, otherwise, the line art doesn't look right if you try to shrink something way down from drawing right. it big. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Oh yeah, yeah. no, it's going to compact it and so like yeah, more, more detail on it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You you have to kind of make sure that your line weights end up matching up. So. Um, I remember about how big the drawings on the kids were. They they were probably, you know, like four by five. Right. So that Hulk has to be about to scale of that. Mm-hmm. Very cool. A lot of uh, a lot of creators today, you know, do many of their elements separately and then composite them. It's just yeah. It may, you know, it makes sense. I mean, for for yeah. easy work. Yeah, I like ending up now with with an original. Now that I've moved away from the digital and the drawing, um, and I'm working, and usually end up in it with a painting, I'll work. I'll do my sketches, and then I'll mess with them in Photoshop and uh, blow them up, 
to the right scale and then print them out and paint right over my sketches. Sure. But yeah, I end up with one nice finished piece. I like that. Well, we're happy to hear that, Zach. We we like artists that stay traditional as, um, uh -huh. as much as possible. You know, I mean, as art collectors, it's, you know, I mean, I, we I don't discount people who work digitally or partially digitally, but at the end of mm -hmm. the day, you know, we, we like seeing traditional work. I mean, it's something that uh, we want to see creators continue. So it's, you know, it's always nice to hear that. Somebody who's kind of tried both, but likes to have something finished and in their hands when it's all over. I mean, that's that's very important to, to all of us. So uh, was this piece for hire or something that you did for Oh, yourself? yeah, this one. Oh, boy. I don't even remember the name of the book cover on this, but um, it ended up following the contour of her body, of, the, of her, on um, what's our left-hand side. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was, yeah, it was a, a book cover. And that is that's very much playing away with the fadeaway thing there. Right. They hired me. That was they they asked for the fadeaway thing, I think, on that one. That yeah. So when you do a lot of book covers, I mean, I know I jumped a, uh, away, but like going back to that, I mean, do you do a lot of uh, mock-ups when you're working on a, on a book cover to give the uh, editorial a chance to kind of pick something? Or like you said, obviously they gave you some direction to begin with. Um, it depends um tomer hanuka who um was a is a is a really great artist he i remember talking with him and i was i was saying oh yeah i sent i sent him all these versions so you know they can pick what they like and he's like why are you doing that you're the artist you figure out what the best version is and send them that don't send them a whole bunch of versions and ask them to choose you're the artist and i was mm -hmm. like that's right I'm going to do that as much as I can. Right. Yeah. Sure. I mean, you know, you send them the one you like the best and if they've got thoughts or whatever, they can work from there. At least then, you know, you're probably working on something that you uh, feel strongly about as well. That's exactly right. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. No, it's a good way to go. Yeah. Working on stuff that you're not excited about is grueling. That's yeah. That's the not fun part of the job. You want to try to make work that you're going to have fun doing for yourself. Sure. Mm -hmm. Make work for yourself that you're going to have fun. Well, you're and that's when you're going to do your best work. Mm -hmm. See, we, yeah, exactly. I completely uh, understand. So uh, I bet that is this a Smallville uh, DPS? I you got, you got it. Yeah, that was a two-page spread for the magazine. That's probably one of my favorites that we ever did. I love the colors in this. I mean, that, uh, you know, that background just works so well. It's very graphic. I mean, I love the design of the, of the whole piece. It just, uh, I can, you know, I can, uh, you know, see how you're really just, uh, you now, th and this is, is this traditional even on the colors or is this? Yeah, separate? no, I mean, colored in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the, that is one, one big drawing. Yeah. Yeah. Not separate elements on that one, I don't think. Most of these Smallville ones, yeah, some of them have separate elements. This one, I, I, I know I, I did all as one piece. It's like two um, 11 by 17 pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty big drawing. Let's see. That was an uh, illustration, uh, like a Samson and Delilah story. story. I'm embarrassed to say I modeled for the Samson. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you don't have enough hair today, Zach. <laughs> uh, you know, it's people think artists are really egotistical, using themselves as models, but they're it's usually just out of necessity. I oh, can't yeah. hire a model, and I'm right there. Exactly. <laughs> now there was a. Uh an artist I really liked that would do a, like they had a blog and every Wednesday they would do like their, their, you know, their references that they would use. And it was always photographs of him. You know, like if he was drawing uh -huh. Daredevil, he'd have a, you know, some kind of a small pipe in his hand and yeah. you know, just showing how, yeah, I mean, the, you're the, you're the reference model. <laughs> That's what you've got. Uh, but the emerald in the, in the coloring here came out, uh, you know, really well. Oh, thank you. Yeah. The effects on that dress, I, I'm, 
I'm quite pleased with. There she is, the other legionnaire from the Smallvilles. Mm -hmm. That's probably my favorite of those. I really like the uh, watercolory effects I was able to get, and her hand, that hand is really solid, and I don't know, everything just came out really good on that one. Yeah, I like it too. I mean, it's uh, it's a bit more muted, but not you know a lot of times when something you know has uh you know like no real striking you know central uh, color reference you know it's just popping you know it kind of gets a little muddy but this isn't muddy at all i mean it's uh it's 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 really gorgeous so even though it's you know it's gray tones with light color in it you're right i think this is uh my favorite of the the three uh, legionnaire pieces that were from the rpg cool yeah yeah, I like how some of that that splatter effect kind of gives her tele, uh, uh, an impression of the telekinesis mm -hmm. mind powers in a way that maybe isn't normally represented. You know, obviously related to the kind of comic book, like like three lines coming out of the head, mm -hmm. but trying to show that in a painterly way. Yeah, this this uh, came out really nice. Uh, is this these were stuff that you uh, are these sold? Are these uh, available? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not 100 percent on that. Well, we'll uh, have to talk afterwards, Zach. I mean, just to you know, if, if you <laughs> want to do something, because definitely, you know, some of the stuff is really nice. I really think that there's uh, there's there'll be interest from our, our audience because you know we don't uh, we I, I do a lot of uh, artist sale show, uh, shows, but we don't have a lot of uh, say painters, you know, that we that we've mm -hmm. done shows with so this these are really nice i think that uh even just the show pieces that might be available would be fun i mean i I'd, I'd like to see them myself so uh yeah this is a great piece cool this was uh drawn and then colored in photoshop this was for i want to say blaze no blaze magazine shoot king this i believe was for king magazine um i did do stuff for blaze or hip-hop magazine um this was an this was a an article about stan lee's success with his marvel properties so it was fun i got to draw a whole uh ganged up shot of the marvel characters nothing wrong with that hulk wolverine fantastic four spidey and storm I mean did you get to pick the characters, or did uh, they kind of give you reference on what the, which characters they wanted to see in it? I don't remember. I'll bet they told me what they which ones. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I threw that cap in there ah. as a my own choice because I think he had just di died in the comics, so I thought it was kind of cool to have a portrait of him up. Um, so I don't remember for sure who how that uh got decided i'm sure they had suggestions oh really nice number one Marvel maybe fan. they said captain america and it was just my choice to put him on the uh in the painting rather than as a character in the room right that'd be my guess yeah awesome uh let's see here oh, another one this is a good one too Star Girl. I think that was for the Smallville RPG. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a, a Superman here. Ah, that's uh, an old illustration. Um, that was for a magazine called Editor and Publisher Magazine. I got work with them for a while through my agent. Did some some fun some fun illustrations um this one yeah this is probably uh i don't know yeah the coolest one or one that might appeal most to you guys uh this is like where some... i this is where i thought sinkevich on oh, the cool. oh yeah yeah i can see that for sure yeah that that big shape and then the the, the face the well-rendered bare face coming out of it um I believe my friend Farrell Dalrymple uh, 
posed for the Superman on this. I think I can see the likeness in there still. <laughs> Gigantic chin. <laughs> we won't pull up a photograph of uh, Dalrymple to, to show off. <laughs> <laughs> the case. Uh, but, no, this is great. Really, really nice. Thanks. Uh, let's see. I know I've got a few more pieces here that uh, Robert picked out. This was um, just a personal piece. Um, trying to, yeah, just. Just wanted to, just, just, yeah, it was kind of like, um, wanted to do something, I think, a little more fantasy based. Uh, I really like that kind of artwork and that like Dun D dungeons and dragons artwork that was some of the first stuff that really influenced me um but i don't really get a chance to do it that often so uh i'm trying to put i'm maybe trying to push that a little more mm -hmm. um i'm interested in trying to look at some of the trading card games getting work through them yeah. Like the um, fantasy stuff. There's some really awesome art that gets made in some of those trading card games. Absolutely. I work, uh, I publish an art annual called Infected by Art that works with a lot of uh, sci fi fantasy artists, people who are involved with Magic the Gathering and, uh, you know, similar properties. And so, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, uh, you know, I love, I love that, you know, that medium. Uh, you know, I grew up on D D too. So that's mm -hmm. why I, 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 I've got, Comic book artwork on the back wall and fantasy artwork on this, on this wall. Nice. So, yeah. Yeah. I love artists like Daryl Sweet and, um, you know, who did a lot, a lot of uh, paperback illustration and just, just, there's just so many. Uh, yeah. I love Donato, his, his, his painting for, um, you know, for Magic the Gathering. And he's, he's just an amazing artist. I mean, there's just long list. But, uh, but yeah, this is a really nice piece. Larry. Elmore and Larry Jeff Elmore. Easley were my big two mm -hmm. growing up. I had an Art of Dragonlance book, and it had a lot of different artists in it, but those two really stood out to me. Yeah, Elmore is fantastic. He, uh, I've got a couple of his uh, his Kickstarter books that he's put out. I think he's even doing another one pretty soon. Oh, cool. But yeah, he, uh, he, he's, he's amazing. I mean, he basically defined... Uh, you know, what D and D, you know, the, the mm -hmm. style, the look, I mean, I, he, even after, and that, and then that was like, what, 12 years after D and D even came out for him to come in and just kind of just like revamp the visuals for, uh, for that product line. He, mm -hmm. yeah, it was incredible. He, he was to the D and D covers what, uh, say Neil Adams was to seventies DC or George mm -hmm. Perez to eighties DC covers. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing what good art can do to, you know, to sell a product, right? I mean, that's, uh, it always comes back to that. Um, you know, Neil Adams. Yeah. That's a name I didn't mention earlier. That is a, was a, a, not one of my biggest influences, but I really like Neil Adams work a lot. And I've listened to interviews with him. Um, real, real big, uh, a lot of really, um, revelatory stuff that, that he had to say. No, agreed. I, I got to interview him a few times. You know, was uh, really happy to had the chance to sit down with him for a few hours and uh, and talk shop and oh, cool. get his his philosophy on life and uh, and many many different things. But yeah, he was very he was a lot of fun to talk with. This and was a Tim Drake Robin, and this was for um, a DC trading trading card um, game. Like what, like what we were just talking about, um, mm -hmm. but with the, in the DCU. So the, yeah, this was the Tim Drake card. This was, uh, this was one of the arts that I was saying all of a sudden, uh, uh, three people, um, wanted to get art from this old trading card game, DC trading card game. And this was one of them mm -hmm. that they, they picked up. Yeah, no, it's nice. I mean, like I say, it's, uh, as, as art collectors, we, uh, you know, we have to kind of be bloodhounds for, uh, for the art sometimes, you know, try to figure out whether it's, you know, does the artist still have it, you know, mm. finding out if they have representation, how to go about it. 
um, because a lot of this stuff, you know, is did stay with the artists, like 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 with you. I mean, but that's kind of part of the enjoyment of of our hobby is is seeking things out like that, finding out where those resources are and you never know there probably was a post on facebook or some forum somewhere that said oh yeah that's uh zachary Ball. here's the here's his website address and so three guys reach out to you for almost simultaneously right yeah, yeah i wondered about that i tried to ask them like how was did something just happen <laughs> <laughs> right uh, but it's always like that though you know it's uh yeah. it's funny but um, let's see, I think I've only got one more image here. Another nice one. Okay, yeah, that was uh, Zatanna, that sound right? Yeah. Zatanna, and that was for the Smallville RPG. Very, I like that one a lot. Everything yeah. came out good on that one. Her yeah. fishnets, the book looks good. Her hair came out cool. The little, I like the little stars. Um, kind of gives the magic vibes mm -hmm. were these characters that were assigned yeah i got a list with little descriptions from what i can recall yeah that's no, gorgeous absolutely thank you uh let's see i think did i queue up something else oh there was uh because there's a painting on the back wall that robert has i know that um he said oh yeah that kitty pride yeah, let me Just see. Just finish I... that one up. Let's see here. I guess I can work backwards. Let me open up this. Oh, right. Yeah, we, yeah, Bill said, uh, Robert set up um, some process stuff on that one. Yeah. We could look at. We... So that's it on the wall. So this was the finished piece. Right. So was this done? Uh, what was this done for? Was it a commission or was it a uh, public? So piece? this originally was for a benefit. Um, it was an art show benefit. Um, I don't remember what it was for. Not not this version though. They, they was not this theory. version, right? Um, but yeah, it was a whole Kitty Pride show. Um, so yeah, everybody did their version of Kitty Pride. And yeah, it was it was really uh, well attended. It was in Portland, Oregon, at Floating World Comics, and this was a big hit at the show. Yeah, this one it sold the, out. Show, show the previous uh, version though that he's talking about. Yeah, we had go click back like three, start, three start or four beginning. here. Yeah, go yeah. way back. We we'll keep going. What, there we go. So that was that. That was that first version that I did for that uh, art show benefit. Okay. And then some cosplayers. Um, they go by Lion Cat Cosplay. If you go to the next image, they did a cosplay of my illustration, which is excellent and was such a thrill for me to see that. And then Robert contacted me and said asked if i still had the kitty pride painting if i still had the original on that and that had been sold at that benefit but uh he asked you i suppose i don't suppose you'd want to paint it again and normally no but uh that was one that i was uh that i was happy to revisit there was some things that i thought i could do better maybe from that original version even though I think that original version has a lot I don't I don't have any problem with it I think it works really well in a different way from the new one but uh, I was I was happy to take another crack at it uh, and we did so this kind so of pretty much started with the exact same back over the over the the same background um, mm -hmm. I just changed the figure. So that's yeah that's that, that's where that's what I printed out and then painted over. They're starting to paint. And the finished. Yep. Yeah, it's lovely. There was one more uh, a photo reference from the, uh, uh, probably the oh, very right. first photo in the set, Bill. 
Oh, if yeah, if you is it all the way back? Yeah, it would be the very first one. Okay. If you, if you yeah, that. Um, I remember reading a Reddit post that said I had photo referenced someone famous. As a matter of fact, <laughs> just like oh yeah, he he he. He photo referenced it wasn't Kim Basinger, but we'll just say, oh yeah, he photo referenced Kim Basinger for this. It's like, a no, I didn't, and why are you saying that like you know when you obviously don't because it isn't true. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, there's a lot. There you of go. That's how that you can trust stuff. everything on Reddit. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that was the original photo reference was that boxer. Right. Well, it's uh, yeah, that's. <laughs> Clearly, Kitty Pride is not built quite like that boxer uh, image, but uh, you know it is what it is. There's a there's there's a lot of people who like to uh, uh, you know there's there's a lot of groups out there that reference like swipes and things, but I I mean I wouldn't I certainly wouldn't put it up and say that that's a swipe from that at all. So that's funny, but you know it is what it is. So lots of people uh, uh, get off on trying to you know be smarter than the artists themselves, I think. But uh, but no, this is fantastic. And it's cool that you you would revisit it. And, you know, I think what you've uh, put together for Robert is is awesome. I think Thanks. that's that's wonderful. And it looks great on the wall too. Right? As you can hear, I'll, I'll go uh, full screen on Robert so you can see he's got it hanging on the wall. It looks great with the blue. Did you, it's almost like Robert uh, either <laughs> painted the room so that that would go well with it or uh, or vice versa. You know, you just- It's all coming it. together now. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, no, that's, that's, that's wonderful. Um, so why don't we, uh, so now we can talk about, uh, that, uh, the new, new mutant stuff, I guess. Let's okay. uh, segue over to there now. Um, so Robert, had you, um, what came first, you know, asking well, about the, you know, doing the uh, Kitty Pride or did you seek out Zachary, you know, once you, uh, you knew that you were hoping to, did you, were you hoping to find the complete issue or were you just hoping to get a page from it? No, I mean, it started with just the book, and when I got back into comics, mm -hmm. you know, 10 years ago, and was seeing what was out there, New Mutants had been a childhood favorite, and so I picked up this Zeb Wells uh, collection, uh, and Diogenes Neves was the main artist on it, um, and, and he did some very nice, nice work, but I was especially struck reading through it uh, by Zachary's uh, issue, which I didn't know anything about about him, of course, at that time, and uh, kept that in the back of my mind as a, a really unique uh, uh, work. And so I eventually w visited his website to see if I could get a page from it. And uh, and two years ago, I, I I got four pages from it, in fact, uh, all at once, and uh, asked him if, they, if all the others were still available, and they were. It was more than I was in a position to bite off, though, uh, at the time. And so I sort of bided my time and, and hoarded my pennies and and uh, came back around and asked him hope against hope that, you know, was it all still available, all the rest of the book, the other 18 pages, and it was. So uh, so we made a deal, and I'm, I'm you know, I, I like the thought of keeping books together. Um, I know why they get broken up. I get it. Um, but this one was in a position to to be acquired uh, and to keep in one piece, it seemed like a, a good thing to do. And I mm -hmm. liked the art a lot. Right, and that was, uh, so that was, well, the first purchase was a couple of years ago and then you, you did the other uh, 18, not too long ago, I assume, but uh, but this was a book from 2005. So Zachary, you, you just, because you don't go out the shows and uh, you just still had the art. That's, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, because I don't know how many books there are from, it was 2009. I, I can't imagine no, there's I, a whole lot of books from 2009 that are still out there intact. Uh, no, not yeah. often. I mean, you know, we, we see some reps sell, you know, complete books these days. I mean, before they break them up and sell them on their websites, but it does not happen too often. So, so, uh, you know, these are nice. And again, these are, you can see the pencil version on the left and uh, the ink or the colored version on the right. So, you know, this is, I mean, this is kind of a, you know, it's, you can see why you really don't need to ink these pages. Zachary. I mean, I think, you know, mm -hmm. your pencils are so finished here, but this is, this is your hand starting to hurt when you look at uh, the work that was, when involved, you know, was involved in these pieces. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I actually, I literally did hurt my arm 
working on this book um, to the point where I really can't do this kind of rendered work anymore. Um, it was an absolutely grueling pace to get this in anywhere close to on deadline with how labor intensive my work is. How, um, how did that even, how did that even come about? Like when they signed you, they, they knew that this was how it was going to be done because it's very unusual to have a book done only in pencil. Right. Um, they were willing to try something different and kind of let me go. And every time I showed them stuff, they said, this looks good. And now at this point, we're to Jim's coloring. Um, my friend Jim colored these. Uh, the first two pages I colored and the rest of the book he did. I was just out of time. Going into it, were you kind of hoping that you were going to actually be able to do the, you know, the penciling and the coloring? Or? All the coloring, I suppose, but I was just as happy to hand it off at that point. I was exhausted. Right. <laughs> it had been months of nonstop. This, this as one much on the, as I could work. This one on the left is one of the ones that really drew my eye and made me seek out the work. I thought that those were just wonderfully different versions because you know comic book characters have a reputation that they all have the same face and so okay to have to have shan looking very clearly vietnamese and Ilyana looking very clearly goth uh awesome yeah i'm glad that really resonated for you um i've had that that's one comment i have heard a compliment i've heard before is i did a good job really showing uh different nationalities not as a sort of generic stereotype exactly now i'm curious about about this spread this is all yeah. the voices inside of legion's head and yeah this is, the, this is the kind of thing that an artist might put some uh inside jokes in oh well we'd have to zoom in it's been a while <laughs> uh, like 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 there's one of definitely the, one, uh, there's all there's you know i could tell you all kinds of inside jokes i can see some now i mean it's mostly just my friends it's like i can see my friends ben and jessica in the top row of uh the 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 stuff above legion where he's laying down um so yeah just getting a chance to throw some friends in a in a wild uh piece like this but yeah, this was this was so cool to to um, to draw. Uh, you know, the writing was so was was gave me a lot of opportunities to uh, do really cool stuff. And was this produced Marvel style, where you got a basic script, or was it more fully scripted? Or I don't know the difference. So a DC comic starts with a typically a very comprehensive script and all the dialogue already pre-written, whereas a Marvel book often starts with more of a plot outline that the artist has a lot of liberty, and then the words come after the writer sees what he drew. No, definitely the first one, yeah, Marvel style. It was, uh, it was all very, yeah, no, everything was, yeah, totally scripted out uh, the word, the word okay. balloons, the dialogue. Who were the uh, references you used for these characters? Um, friends and um, stuff I would dig up. Going back one, Bill, that uh, that oh. Roberto is probably my my favorite image of Roberto on these these couple of pages. He really captured uh, in the second the panel. The, yeah, the, and on the previous page oh, as cool. well. The, the sunspot yeah. character, uh -huh. and, the, and and it helped that Zeb Wells' dialogue here just was totally spot on. You know, we don't have time to read the book, but it's all about banter between Bobby and Sam, who have been portrayed as as friends from very different backgrounds throughout their existence. Oh, cool! I'm glad. You, I, I'm glad you like that. Uh, I like that uh, those panels in the middle of that page with uh, Danny. That's her name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
with the uh, door to the danger room opening up and then the slow zoom in. Yeah, I learned yesterday in, in film, they call this an axial cut when you have a, you know, and of course everything in comic book is a cut because it's panel to panel, but when in film, like in Psycho, where you zoom in on, you know, the mouth of a character in jumps, um, uh -huh. like Alfred Hitchcock, uh, that's called an axial cut. Cool. Um, this I know I had my, I, my, my friend Farrell Dalrymple definitely modeled for uh, Cannonball. And my, and his sister actually, Krista, modeled for Danny. Cool. She's not Native American, so at, at that point I had to, um, you know, alter her face. Look at look at Native American faces to right. get get to look right. Right. So so the story here for everybody, there's two stories, but one of them involves Danny has lost her powers and Sam says she can't go on missions anymore. And so she plans to fight him to prove her worth so that she's still able to go with the team. Uh, it's sort of like in X-Men 201 where, Ro, where uh, Aurora and Cyclops have to fight for who's going to lead the X-Men. Did Cyclops win that one, Robert? The Cyclops lost that one, and yeah, he, slunk, he slinked off to X Factor. I know, I know. I I just wanted to get a rise out of Marcus yeah. in the chat. <laughs> now, now that one also has the, those whole bunch of small inset panels showing the length of their fight on that previous page as well. Yeah, no, I mean the panel layout on that is really nice too. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I kind of I like that. I like it all leading into that punch where we don't actually see the contact where it's behind the panel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought that was a pretty fun solution to all that. A little less, uh, straight, straight up violent, you know, a little, uh, sanitized on the violence <laughs> where we don't actually see the contact. We don't have to see Sam hit a girl. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And this is the other plot, which involves it's a flashback to what happened in the first four issues of this of these series, in which they go and they rescue Legion from where he is, and at one point, uh, Ilyana and Shan are trapped in Legion's mind, and Ilyana hands her soul sword to Shan, who ends up killing uh, one of Legion's rogue personalities, and it's a secret that they don't want to get out apparently. Yeah, the coloring is pretty nice on here, too. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice to just have these show up colored. It's it's a thrill to see okay. that sort of immediate, you know, result where mm -hmm. I'm just having seen it uncolored, and now all of a sudden I'm getting to see, see it uh, finished. Whereas when you're going through that process, it's so slow. It's hard to appreciate it all at once. Right. right. There's, a cool, there's a cool little skull in her pupil there in the first panel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a nice little detail. Definitely. Yeah, it looks like the la last panel was resized when they, uh, maybe when they were doing some of the digital painting or something. Oh, I may, huh, I'm not sure. Yeah, look at that. I, I, I don't know why that happened. I mean, it looks, uh, it looks fine. Well, you yeah. know, uh, but uh, there, that's the liberty you can take when you're when you get it to that stage of things, I guess, right? But it's, uh, but yeah, no. I'm, again, the colorist, your your friend did a fantastic job on this. It's nice to work with somebody whose work uh, uh, style you can you you could trust going into it. Yeah. Yeah, Jim Campo. He's he did a bunch of stuff with Tony Millionaire. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Love Tony Millionaire stuff. Yeah, that's great. Um, that's somebody who, that's an artist whose work I, I'd love to get one representative piece from one day. Uh -huh. Warlock is one of the most notoriously difficult characters to draw because Sienkiewicz did him so distinctly in reverse. Yeah. I, yeah, he's, I had a lot of fun. I felt like that all came out real good, the Warlock stuff. Even people who didn't love my art in this issue mostly said the Warlock looked good.
yeah. Warlock visiting Doug's grave because next issue Doug gets resurrected by Celine. Yeah, Warlock came out really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. The coloring is good on it. Yeah, yeah, the coloring does look good. That was fun too to get. Oh, go back one sure. one sec for me. That to get to draw the new mutants. Um, he's finding an old photo of them mm. there. So to get to draw the kind of classic new mutants team there in, you know, in sort of, you know, my, this warlock looks a lot more beefcake than that old more Sienkiewicz looking warlock. I just thought that was, that was a cool touch that Danny looks good in that too. I like her laughing. Like we just caught her in a candid moment. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. No, yeah, no, it's it, it's it's fantastic. I want to go back to the pencil piece for a second. Okay. Yeah, I can see why this ended up hurting. <laughs> you know, it, there's just yeah. there's a lot of. Uh, I mean, you, all the tonal work that you did in you know in that last uh, in the last page. I mean, that's you know, knowing how the colorist came in there, you, you know, you could have, you could have went half, you know, you could have, couldn't have, you could have left some of the detail out. I mean, I, as right. an artist, I mean, I can see why, you, you know, you'd want to go through it, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, I mean, you, it's, it's tough though. I mean, when you're, when you're in it and it's, it's, it's a month long project for you or it's probably, was it, I mean, did you have a month to do it? I guess. Oh, it no. took more than that. Yeah. They probably would have liked me to have had it done. The original deadline might have been something like a month, but it was at least three. Three? Okay. Well, yeah. Good. You needed it, right? I needed every second of it. Yeah, <laughs> no. My girlfriend at the time was begging me to go outside, and it's like, I, I don't think I have time. <laughs> 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 and I didn't. I really, yeah. I really, it was right down to the wire. Yeah. Wow. And then the universe forced me into painting. Mm -hmm. Which is fine. I, I I love doing the painted stuff. I, to some degree, the the pencil was a kind of a crutch. Uh, I I feel like the painted work is stronger, in the end, than the uh, color the pencil stuff that was colored. Um, I'm happy I'm painting. Let's say let's put it that way. I'm not. Yeah, I don't. I'm not like oh no, my arm. I can't draw anymore. Like. I'm happy that the universe forced me into painting. I think it's what I'm supposed to be doing. No, I I, I agree. I mean, I, I love your painted work. I mean, like I say, there isn't enough people painting in uh, you know doing traditional painting in uh, in comics and illustration these days. That's um, there just isn't enough. I mean, I, so it's 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 good. Okay, you're, good. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I agree with everybody. We should we should definitely talk at, you know after the show, Zach, and see if uh, you know what we could potentially do down the road as far as like uh, you know a, a show where we can show off some pieces for sale or something. I mean, it'd be interesting to see uh, you know what what people think. But it'd be nice to kind of get a feel for what you have and what what things you may want to part with, and we can just figure out uh, you know a format to do it you know through here and um yeah i'd love to work with you on it because again there's just not a not enough of this stuff kind of thing out there but uh okay. but this was fun robert i'm yeah. glad you suggested the show i mean we uh you know it's again it's not often i, I don't think we've while well, we've talked with people who own complete issues we've not i don't think we've really had somebody on where we actually showed every uh page and just you know got to kind of relish in the fact that uh, somebody uh, in our community owns a complete issue. So that's uh, phenomenal. Do you have other complete, any things laying around Zach? That's uh... um, the, some of the shorter, the, you know, like four or five page things. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. What was that one that I did? Uh, it was for this. Um, oh crap. Uh, it was this whole Marvel reimagining like Nostradamus was in it. Uh, like, Leonardo, um, Donna, it was uh, the Avengers. It was like a reimagining of the Avengers. Anyways, I did this, I did like a six page, like a uh, short for this. Um, that's as, as far as I remember, it was an Avengers thing. It was really, it was pretty cool. Um, but it was like as if the Avengers had existed back since like Leonardo times. Interesting. 
Well, cool. Well, yeah. Well, well let's definitely talk. It was like, yeah, anyway, yeah. I've got like a six-page story from that. Sorry. Oh, awesome. Um, well, I mean, uh, any parting thoughts from either of you before we uh, bid adieu to uh, the chat and uh, the show this evening? I really, it's been a been a fun journey and uh, great to see uh, Zachary and all his work, and and uh, just glad to have a chance to uh, let the world see what he's up to. Yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you, Robert. Um, yeah, thank you for making this painless. Um, that sounds really good. Coming back for um, for something yeah. now that I've uh, tested the waters here, and it's uh, like I say, it was painless. Good. I like to hear that. And, and again, it's you know, it's fun to uh, you know, for me, I wasn't familiar with your work before, Zachary. But uh, but that's one of the great things about our hobby. I mean, typically every day on the website that I run, there's there's an, an artist that I, I don't know a lot about or I've never heard of before and I get to see their work. And that's uh, that's kind of been the best thing for me, you know, working on uh, comic art fans for the last 20 years is just discovering new creators that I wasn't aware of and uh you know meeting the collectors who who help bring some of that work out that we get to see so i appreciate robert for doing that and uh you know this again i mean i i look forward to potentially working with you again on this zachary so okay. uh, thank, thank you both awesome uh, yeah all right well uh again everybody in the chat thank you for uh, hanging out with us uh, i'll definitely keep everybody in the loop to let you know if uh, zachary and i will be doing a show in the future um i've got another show tomorrow uh night with uh kelvin mao uh, collector many people know he's uh, he, he collects Sinkevich he collects uh, a lot of good stuff so we'll be looking at some artwork from his collection too but again Zachary and Robert I, I appreciate you hanging out with us tonight. can I say one last thing yeah please I do. should have mentioned Andrew Robinson as a huge influence I, I absolutely love Andrew Robinson's work he's one of my favorite comic book artists yeah, he's uh, an artist. We uh, we we feature. I would well, we featured several of his pieces uh, uh, in a calf update we do as a weekly show. His stuff is phenomenal. I, yeah, yeah, he's one of the best. Such a good drawer. Yeah, love his style. Okay, sorry. No, no. All right. Well, so uh, yeah, again, I appreciate you both uh, hanging out with me tonight. And again, uh, yes, uh, uh, you know, we will definitely do this again. Uh, we'll see everybody cool. uh, again in the in the near future.